Yes, very good, Marshi. There are wonderful questions from the press today, questions of knowledge, questions of great practicality as well. Very First good. is a question of clarification on Maharshi's concept of Vedic engineering. Maharshi defined Vedic engineering last week as a miraculous process where, quote, you think and your skill of thinking engages all the laws of nature necessary to bring fulfillment to your aspiration. What is the connection between transcendental meditation and Vedic engineering? Is transcendental meditation, in fact, a form of Vedic engineering, or is some other mental skill required? That can be taken to be a complete approach to engage total natural law, because transcendental meditation takes the awareness to that field of unified wholeness, the field of unity, transcendental consciousness, and there is the total collectedness of all the laws of nature. Total collectedness of all the laws of nature, home of all the laws of nature, is investigated through the simple <laughs> a technique of transcendental meditation. And what it discovers to one's awareness is total natural law. Now, engineering, when we want to be the student of engineering, what we want is, we want the ability to create any structure we want, to create any kind of dynamic performance that we want. And what is our, what is our goal of pursuit of knowledge of engineering? Now let us see how much we can comprehend as our goal of engineering. When we think that way, then we come to a very delightful level of that engineering where in empty space innumerable galaxies float around and so many suns, and so many moons, and stars, and the whole thing that Dr. Hagelin <laughs> described in his, in his introductory lecture. The enormous structure of the universe. When we want to be the student of engineering, we want to be Master of Engineering. And Master of Engineering would mean, if at all possible, <laughs> we want to have in our lively intelligence, in our lively awareness, all those innumerable facets of techniques and engineering that construct the universe and that operate the universe with perfect order and for all time. We don't know for how long, millions of years, Vedic knowledge has all those data recorded and all that, all that. But uh, our aspiration as a student of engineering should be supreme skill that will be able to structure anything out of anything. If out of the whole empty space, the galactic universe could continue to evolve and continue to evolve, and continue to grow, and continue to all-time grow, 
that kind of engineering, if at all possible, we would like to have. And now we come, whether it is possible, we say, yes, it is possible, because that level of intelligence is, uh, to cut this story short, is in our own self-referral consciousness, in our own Atma, in our own self, which on the religious level we say, in our own light of God. On the scientific level, we say, in our own totality of natural law, it's there. And therefore, to aspire for, for that total knowledge of engineering to pop up in our awareness and give us that ability to materialize every thought that we want. If innumerable galaxies and suns and all this could become a reality, as it is, we see it is a reality, then that kind of engineering, if we can have in our awareness, that is the engineering we want. And I invite the world to learn it. And if there is a really sincere desire, I'll open schools for this engineering everywhere. So that it's not only a part of civil engineering or a part of mechanical engineering or a part of this kind of engineering or that kind of engineering. No, 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 no. All kinds of engineering, all kinds of engineering. <laughs> Now we can imagine how many kinds of engineering will be involved in the empty space when a galaxy is born. How many, how many kinds of electrical and magnetic and civil engineering and all kinds of engineering how many kinds of engineering would be involved in the emergence of a galaxy in the empty space? It's beyond human concept. But if that could be brought in human awareness, that is the engineering we would like to have. And there is a record of that engineering in the Vedic literature. And there is a very systematic approach to enliven that total possible engineering. Every student should have that goal in the engineering. We can open engineering colleges everywhere and make the people rise to create Hmm, I, was, <laughs> I was saying, galaxies from empty space. This is the kind of engineering we would like to teach to our, our children, and the children would like to learn this engineering, so that whatever is the, <laughs> whatever is the example of enormously complicated and total engineering that could be planted in the awareness of anyone. Invite the press to talk more about it, raise more points on it. It's such a joy to see that we can give to our, to our students of engineering we can give to our students of engineering. We can give to our students of engineering an empty box. And that will serve to be a Pandora box for them. <laughs> From that empty box, 
they can create anything. That engineering, it's not magical, it is practical. <laughs> it's practical. Vedic record is full of this practicality. Now let us see, even the functioning of the body, which His Majesty Raja Ram has, has uh, explained very clearly. There is an explanation of consciousness assuming the role of physiology. It's the same thing, intelligence becoming physiology. It's the same thing, empty space becoming a galaxy. How much of engineering in the body, when you look to the body, when you look to the body, when you look to the body, how much complications are there? Informations moving up and down and from eyes to ears to ears to nose to nose to throat to this. Enormous activity going on, but very systematically. Who is doing it? We have a word for it, intelligence, consciousness, atma, the self, unified field in the name of, uh, in terms of modern physics. Doesn't matter in what name we say, but in this age now, we, we don't want what were the dark ages in the past or what was the dark age yesterday. But today, <laughs> as Dr. Hagelin said, today's science is today's science. It is the science of all possibilities. Today's engineering, it is such a joy for me to say that inconceivable, complicated <laughs> engineering can be a practical possibility for our students of engineering. We'll, we'll soon, we'll soon open. We'll soon open, we'll soon open. What will we open? All this knowledge will open to everyone that un <laughs> unimaginable, just these words, huh? unimaginable possibilities will be delivered in our forthcoming Vedic University everywhere, which will have a faculty of engineering about which we are talking just now. It's completely possible. Raise more points on this is such a joy for me to to, to express it in the answering the questions about engineering is a very, very solid, practical, down-to-earth field of knowledge. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Dr. Hagelin inspired the press to, to think on it, and you also join in the, in the thought process, because this is the time uh, um, we can we can think aloud with our thinkers in the world in this press conference. See what is possible for human life today from our science, from our Vedic science, or even from our physics, or even from our chemistry, even for anything. But when this research has been done, then don't waste children's time in test tube science teaching. No, 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 no. You get a machine and teach a man to make use of the machine. Later on, tell him how the machine was made. So give him the engineering in his own awareness and then later on give him the 
theoretical knowledge about this formula and this thing and this thing and this thing. That will be a never-ending mathematics on engineering. Never-ending mathematics of engineering. That I said someday, that will be Vedic mathematics, where plus and minus go together. Vedic mathematics. Time is now, I think, good for us to come out with this kind of, uh, with this kind of teaching institutions, whether we call them schools or colleges or universities or institutions. Time is there to invite all our existing schools and universities to take this knowledge and give it to their students, completely give it to their students, because thousands of all the population, student population, uh, is being led to, to very, very insignificant values of engineering. So uh, let's open the flood of total knowledge of engineering to everyone. Huh?